Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise to the plane of our national anthem. Good evening and welcome to the concert in the park with the Plymouth Municipal Band. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening. The last time we met, there were three polar bears and a penguin left. So I, I don't know if anyone wants to claim them, but tonight it's summer. It's beautiful. It's exactly what we've always looked forward to. Um, this is uh, Andrea Panier, our director, and she is the 14th director of the Plymouth Municipal Band. She's the first female to be the director of the Plymouth Musical Band, so it's a thank you. And she's starting her 16th year at St. Mary Springs uh, Academy High School, where she teaches high school band, choir, vocal jazz, the jazz band. She is a graduate of Plymouth High School and has played in the band for over 20 years. So we are delighted that you are here. Thank you. And it's a birthday. It's the Plymouth Municipal Band's birthday. 155 years in existence. Yeah. No original members are in the band. We may look that way, but we're not original. So um, it's delightful that we see so many of you. Bring your friends next time because it's a great, great opportunity to meet people and talk and just enjoy this beautiful, beautiful music. We're going to start out tonight with Sea Shanties. It's a nautical melody. We'll feature two folk songs, The Wellerman and Roll the Old Chariot Along. The Wellerman went viral on TikTok at the start of 2021. The Sea Shanty is a song style with deep maritime roots that was popular connective for the United States uh, sailors. Sea shanties help sailors labor together in the unison uh, aboard these vessels. Like many sea shanties, this song is a typical call and response structure. The sea shanty man will call and they will be repeated back. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Plymouth Municipal Band with Sea Shanties.
The Purple Pageant March is one of the recognizable marches of Carl King. And Carl King was a contemporary of John Philip Sousa, and both of them wrote about the same time and turned out a lot, a lot of marches. This one was written for King's close friend, Glenn Cliff Bainham. And Glenn, through his service and leadership, conducted his music ensembles for 27 years at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. The title, Purple Pageant, evoked the showmanship of Glenn's band dressed in the purple of Northwestern. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Purple Pageant.
in 19 or in 2023, the Walt Disney Company kicked off 100 years of wonder. The year-long event honors the centennial anniversary of the date the brothers, Roy and Walt Disney, founded the company back in Los Angeles in 1923. And uh, to celebrate also, uh, not just in the theme parks, but Miss Panier was the director of the uh, marching band at uh, St. Mary Springs Music Department, and they went to Disney World and performed there. And this fall, Cody Wisman, who is the director of the Plymouth uh, Marching Band, will be uh, going to Disney World to march there as well. So we're celebrating Disney all over the place. If you're a Disney fan, you'll recognize the melodies from Disney's Magic Kingdom. This melody includes the Mickey Mouse March, Baroque Hoedown, Yo Ho Ho, It's a Private's Life for Me, and It's a Small World. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Disney Magic Kingdom. America the Beautiful is a song based on a poem 
written by Catherine Lee Bates during an 1893 trip to Pikes Peak. The view was so beautiful it inspired her to write, all the wonder of America seemed displayed there with sea-like expanse. Within a few months, it was set to music. The poem first appeared in a publication called The Congregationalists on July 4th, 1895, with the editor's introductory note, Miss Bates' poem has the true patriotic ring to the 4th of July. The song is considered by some to be the country's unofficial national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, here is America the Beautiful. Continuing with the patriotic theme of July 4th, just being a few days away, we're going to uh, honor someone, Captain America. Now, Captain America was the first adventure uh, in a 2011 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character, Captain America. Captain America is one of Marvel's most popular heroes. Uh, Marvel Comics has released three total movies starring Captain America, and one is the work in the works to be released in 2024. So here we are, patriotic, the Captain America March. Thank you. 
This next number is called the Armed Forces Salute. This medley is a tribute honoring our men and women of the Armed Forces. This particular medley will include the Quezon Song, Semper Paratus, the Marines Hymn, the United States Air Force, and Anchors Away. During this song, if you are a veteran of one of those branches of services, would you please stand? If you have a family member who is currently serving, would you please stand during that particular uh, song? Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Armed Forces Salute.
veterans, we want to thank you for your years of service and sacrifice to this nation and for all of us. Thank you very much. At this time, we're going to take an intermission, and the band will take a short break, and we'll be back in just a jiffy. So uh, have something at the concession stand, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Well, welcome back to the second half of the Plymouth Municipal Band concert. We hope you're enjoying this evening and enjoying the weather because it's, it's great. We're going to start with a number called Cartoon Carnival. This medley is a nod, nod to the classic cartoons from the early years. There was nothing like being a kid in the 1960s watching Saturday morning cartoons from the Flintstones to superheroes and many, many more. The cartoons heard in this medley aired between 1940 and 1990. Audiences met Fred and Wilma Flintstone, as well as their next door neighbors, Betty and Barney Rubble, 60 years ago. After the Flintstones producers, Hannah Barbara, they were seeking to follow up with a, another uh, show, and they decided to take a look to the future, opposite of the Stone Age, to the future of the distant 21st century, which included the Jetsons, a cartoon family about America's first space age family. The most recent cartoon of the medley came from the 1990s called The Animaniacs, which was a variety show which featured a large cast of characters. This particular medley would include Merrily We Roll Along, Meet the Flintstones, Jetsons' main theme, Animaniacs, This Is It, and the merry-go-round broke down. So ladies and gentlemen, here is Cartoon Carnival. <laughs>
after, after listening to this, it made you hungry for Pop-Tarts and Tang. <laughs> Semper Fidelis, this march takes its title from the motto of the United States Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. And it was dedicated to those that inspired it, the officers of the United States Marine Corps. In John Philip Sousa's own words, I wrote Semper Fidelis one night while in tears after my comrades of the Marine Corps had sung their famous hymn at Quantico. Musically speaking, John Philip Sousa considered this his best march. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Plymouth Municipal Band with Semper Fidelis. This next piece takes the familiar tune, My Lord, What a Morning, and makes it a bit jazzy, a bit folksy, and a bit classical. This African-American spiritual is inspired by the spontaneous emotions of the African-derived slave and plantation songs that took on a uniquely identity during the post-Civil War era. Ladies and gentlemen, here is fantasy on an African-American spiritual.
In 1956, Jack and the Beanstalk became a musical adaptation from the classic children's story. The story follows a poor farm boy named Jack who trades the family car, cow for some magic beans. And his adventures happen when he climbs the stalk that grows from the beans. Although the musical is not very well known, some of you may recognize the tune from being played on the old Captain Kangaroo TV show in the 1950s and 60s. Here is the March of the Ill-Assorted Guards.
Too Proud, The Life and Times of Temptations is a musical production currently touring the United States. It, it was originally a 2018 jukebox musical with songs by The Temptations and a book by Dominique Morceau. It's based on the story of The Temptations' extraordinary journey from the streets of Detroit to the hall of rock and roll, how they met, how they rose, the ground-breaking breaking heights they hit, and how personal and political conflicts threatened to tear the group apart as the United States fell into civil unrest. The Temptations were celebrating their 60th anniversary in 2022. To mark this milestone, the Temptations released a new album, Temptations 60, with nearly all new original songs. Otis Williams, the sole surviving original member of the Temptations, turned 81 in October of 22. Here is The Temptations on stage. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sometimes Hollywood makes mistakes. If you watch movies, sometimes uh, you'll see a man and he's like this, and then the next time he's like this. There was a mistake in the editing, and there's lots of mistakes if you watch and listen carefully. This next big mistake was in the Hollywood film of The Lone Ranger starring Johnny Depp. And in it, the culmination is the joining of the Transcontinental Railroad and the uh, pounding of the Golden Spike. The band is there, there's hundreds of people there, and they're playing this song, but it hadn't been written yet. <laughs> so 20 years later, it was written. And tonight, here it is, the Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Plymouth Municipal Band under the direction of Miss Andrea Panier. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Next week, the band will be the Bottle Rocket. And it's classic rock, so I know you'll enjoy that. And then we'll be back the following week. We're on tour next week, so uh, the, the band, the Bottle Rockets, will be here. Yes. Oh, on Saturday? Mill Street on Saturday, the 8th. We'll be there. 10 o'clock at Stair Park? At Stair Park. So be there or be square. Okay. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>